Hello friends, this is Carrie and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. Today we have two stories out of the Entitled Parents subreddit. Let's begin. Our first story is by Racer89. Entitled mom wants me to pay for her upgrade and harasses me for being part German. I, 29 male, am traveling about once or twice a month from Germany to visit my father in Spain. He spends his well-earned retirement there. I am self-employed, running two businesses, and since they're both doing very well, I'm glad that I can afford to fly to visit him so often. I always fly in business class, BC, with a known German air carrier group. Given the fact that I can check in two pieces of luggage, since I like to bring a lot of stuff back from Spain. For example, cheese, sausages, foods, fruits from my father's trees, etc. After my three to five day stay. There is a certain route for flights to Spain from Germany, which is very convenient for me since I'm saving a lot of money. Up to 150 euros for a return ticket in business class. The downside to this offer is that I have to take an early flight. Six 30 a.m. So I have a stopover in Zurich, Switzerland. So I have to be at the airport by 5 a.m. for my luggage drop-off. So one morning in March, I got up early around 4 a.m., got myself ready for the cab I ordered. The cab arrived on point and dropped me off at the airport around 4.50. Since the check-in counter would open around 5, I got in line, to which I was the only person there, and I was first. Around a few minutes prior to the opening of the counter, I saw a mother, later revealed to be EM, with her kid struggling with the luggage machines at the economy luggage drop-off. Minding my own business, I continued looking at my phone to check my email. Suddenly, the EM and her kid cut me in line. Me. Excuse me, ma'am. You have to wait until it's your turn. EM. Don't you see I have a child? And therefore, I don't have to wait. Me. I'm pretty sure having a child doesn't give you any special rights to cut people in line. Please wait your turn. EM. Oh my god! Leave me alone, you perv! Apparently, the dialogue didn't, didn't go unnoticed by the airport staff. AS, which then came over to find out what the issue could be, and so they asked me first. AS, is there a problem, sir? Me. Well, I, she cuts me off. EM, why are you asking him first? I'm the victim here. He cut me in line. Me. Well, that's not true. I've been patiently waiting since 5.50 in the morning for the counter to open when she suddenly came out of nowhere cutting me in line. AS, ma'am, may I please see your ticket? AS was starting to smile after he saw EM's ticket as she gave it to him. AS, ma'am, you're at the wrong check-in counter. You're flying economy class. You have to use the luggage drop-off machine over there. EM, so, I'm a mother with a child. I have the right to stand here in line to drop off my luggage as well as he does. I hand him my phone showing him my ticket, which states business class slash FT frequent traveler. AS. This gentleman has every right to stand in this line. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. EM. I won't leave. Leave me alone. Then the counter opened up and EM ran faster than the speed of light to the worker at the desk trying to check her luggage. I just told AS, don't worry. It's okay. I'm not in a rush. I'm sure she will be sent away shortly by the counter staff. A second worker at another counter waved at me and I went to her. She was asking what the ruckus was about and I had told her what happened. She giggled and, and I, I was able to drop my luggage off without any problem. When she asked me if I wanted a printed boarding pass on paper, I gladly said yes. Since you know, Murphy's Law could occur at any time when your phone dies on a trip, that sort of thing. As she wanted to give me, as she went to give me my boarding pass, EM came over and she shouted, you pay for my upgrade. Me. Excuse me? EM. You heard me. I deserve it way more than you to fly business class. Me. Are you for real? I won't pay for your upgrade. I don't know you. And apart from the fact that you're really rude to me earlier, called me a perv and cut in line. EM. Then give me your ticket. Me. I will do no such thing. Have a nice day, lady. I grabbed my boarding pass and left, hoping I'd never see this crazy lady again. Well, EM apparently had other plans in mind. She followed me to the security check. Then I got a call from my girlfriend. While I was on the phone, she was swearing at me. You're a terrible person. You shouldn't be so rude to a woman with my child. And the far crazier thing she said was, you stole that money to buy the ticket. No chance in hell a young criminal like you could ever afford a ticket like that. And this is the part where I got angry, but I didn't lose my cool. Ma'am, you don't know who I am or what I'm or what I do for a living. You have absolutely no right to say these things to me just because you might be jealous. Oh, 
Oh boy, I wish I hadn't have said that. EM got really mad and started kicking my hand luggage. She then grabbed my boarding pass and grabbed her kid's hand and ran off to the security gate. Luckily, the airport staff slash security, which helped me earlier, was watching the whole thing again and stopped right at the front gates. Afterwards, the airport police had been called and I was asked if I wanted to press charges against her. Seeing her little kid so embarrassed about the whole situation, I decided I wouldn't do it. The EM afterwards started a meaningless discussion about how criminal foreigners like me can fly like this while single mothers who have no support or anything. I have slightly darker skin since my mother was part Asian, but my father is German. I grabbed my stuff, passed through the gates, and went to the restroom. Afterwards, I wanted to eat some breakfast at the lounge. On my way to the lounge, I again encountered the EM and her kid. It baffles me to this very day how someone that mentally unstable was able to get past the security check after acting like a spoiled teenager. Again, she saw me, and this time she tried to follow me, thinking I wouldn't notice her. Well, joke's on her. I went straight to the lounge and got rid of her. I entered the lounge. I then asked at the counter if my boarding gate had been announced yet. During that time, I heard EM screaming and whining through the massive glass doors of the lounge yelling louder and louder than I'd heard before. That was my friend. He knows me. I'm sure he will confirm everything. I couldn't be bothered with that anymore. I sat down in an empty armchair, plugged my headphones in, listened to some music while getting some breakfast. Suddenly a lounge employee went through asking guests if they knew anything about the crazy lady outside. This was getting old and out of hand very quickly. So I went to the lady and explained what had happened at the check-in counter and the security gate. EM was eventually sent away by the airport police. After enjoying my stay in the business class lounge, I went to my boarding gate. And again, the universe seems fit to continue tormenting me. I saw the EM at the same gate. This time, I tried to avoid being seen. So I tried to walk around her and got in line for priority boarding. Then the announcement came for the boarding to start. I quickly got onto the plane, but bad luck strikes again. The plane has been swapped from an Airbus 321 to an Airbus 320, meaning that every passenger had to enter at the front instead of two separate ones, meaning the EM would see me when she got on the plane. I decided it would be a good time to go to the bathroom, so I asked the flight attendant if that would be possible. She said there was no problem. I went, hoping that she would pass me once I got out. Well, the joke's on me. When I got out, nobody else boarded the plane for some reason, and I got back to my seat and hoped for the best. Suddenly, everyone, and I mean everyone, was having their eyes wide open as they heard EM's loud squeaky voice during the hallway up to the plane. To make matters worse, I sat in 1A. I would be most likely for her to spot me. And for the completion of all this trouble, her kid saw me first, then she did. I took a deep breath and thought, this is going to be the longest 45 minute flight to Switzerland. Immediately after she spotted me, she tried to screw me over again, starting an unexpectedly civil conversation that I would sit in her seat. EM. Excuse me, sir. I believe you're sitting in my seat. Me? No. Look at my boarding pass. She then took it away from me and claimed to the flight attendant that I would, that I tried to screw her over. This was all BS. The flight attendant then looked at the name on the boarding pass and asked the EM if she realized that there was a male name on the boarding pass. Shortly after, I reached into my wallet and showed my ID. Afterwards, she claimed that it would have been an error in the carrier system since she states that she booked this seat row for her and her kid. She then just sat down next to me with her child, saying that she wouldn't move and that she deserved to fly in business class since she had a child. Long story short, the flight attendant gave her one last warning. If she didn't stop this crap right now, that she and her child would be kicked off the flight. Suddenly, she became reasonable and left me alone. Shortly after takeoff, when breakfast was served, the flight attendant from before came to me and apologized for the disturbance. I said to her that there was no need to worry, as it wasn't her fault and told her, crazy people always think they're right. In the end, I got to Spain on time and I was very happy that I could enjoy some time with my dad. Anyway, on to our second and final story. Our final story is by Peach Problems. Entitled parents get banned from a gym because they abandon their child in the pool during an emergency. The last story about the teen that pushed the entitled mom into the pool made me remember something that had happened to me when I was eight years old. I'm writing on mobile, so please be aware of type 
typos and terrible format. At a gym that my family used to go to, there was a decent sized pool area which had a hot tub in the corner. Every few days they would have family swim where as the name implies you can bring your kids and just play around in the pool. No lanes are allowed to be up during this time and this is the only time that the lifeguard is actually present in the pool area. The rules were pretty standard for early 2000s including any child under 15 had to be accompanied by an adult in the pool area. But as you can guess there was an issue of parents just dumping little Johnny or Susie off at the pool so that they could go to the gym section without having to worry about them for an hour or so. Family swim was always busy and the kids usually all played together in the pool while the, the adults sat in the hot tub where they could watch their kids and chill. So for the most part no one really noticed or could tell when there was a kid without a guardian in the pool area. So my older brother, myself, and about six other kids were in the pool and were playing with the water diving toys. The toys that sink to the bottom of the pool that you dive to grab. Having a blast. We threw all of them in the deep end, almost like a game of jacks. It would see who could dive and collect the most before needing to come back up for air. Well, it was entitled kids turn to collect. So we threw all of them in and he dived down to grab them. While he was down there, an old man slipped on the tile floor that surrounded the pool and hit his head very hard on the ground. If you've ever heard the cracking of a skull, it's not a sound that goes unnoticed, even in a pool area. Immediately, the lifeguard and the parents are yelling for the kids to get out of the pool now. Entitled Kid comes up for air, having not seen or heard the old man fall. Doesn't listen to the lifeguard or the other parents yelling for the kids to get out of the pool. My brother grabs me and pushes me over the edge of the pool onto the tile. I see that there's a pool of blood underneath the unconscious man's head. See into the little vent things that allow water on onto the tiles and get back into the pool. My brother pushes himself out of the water and by the time almost all the kids have been grabbed at the edge of the pool or had gotten out using the stairs except EK. His parents aren't there so the only one yelling for him to get out of the pool is the 17 year old lifeguard. The kid ignores him, continues diving for toys, so the lifeguard jumps into the pool and wrestles this kid out of the water, all while EK is screaming and kicking. The lifeguard manages it and at this point other staff members in the gym had rushed into the pool area to help the old man. My mom and dad rushed my brother and I off to the locker room to wash ourselves off and shampoo our hair and get into clean clothes. So I didn't see what happened to the old man. When my mom and I were done done in the locker room we headed to a reception desk to sign out. We see a young couple with a sobbing EK in hand yelling at the poor lifeguard about not helping their, their kid out of the pool faster. That the lifeguard was at fault for the old man slipping somehow and that he was incompetent and in how he, it was his fault if their kid got sick. Another staff member is trying to figure out the situation and the staff member turns to the lifeguard and says, did you see these guests in the pool area with their son? And the lifeguard replies, no. So the staff member turns back to the parents and says something like, you didn't follow our gym's rules and therefore it was you that endangered the life of your child, not the lifeguard. You are no longer welcome at this gym. Please gather your things up right now and turn in your membership card on the way out. Or I will call the cops. We left before we heard the rest of the conversation, but we heard the entitled father yelling from the parking lot. My parents spent the whole ride home bashing these awful people, saying stuff like, how can people leave their kid alone in a swimming pool with strangers like that. It was kind of traumatizing. I've seen people injured but not unconscious before. I don't know what happened to the old man. I never saw him again. I do hope he was okay though. Me too. I hope the old man was okay. These parents are awful parents. I mean, leaving your kid alone in a pool area where you have to be there? I mean, was it too hard for one of them to sit in the pool area and watch their kid while the other one exercises and switching off? I'm glad the parents got kicked out in the end. They really shouldn't be there if they can't even follow basic instructions, but then again, that's entitled parents for you. The rules only apply to other people and not to them. Anyway, that's all the stories I have today. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. Links to the original stories will be in the description box below. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new content. Thank you for watching and have a great day.